This is All Sports All the Time, episode 104. It is our two-year anniversary, and of course, to celebrate, Parker and Luke are both not available this week, so that's great. Um, we, have a, a <laughs> we have a special guest, but before that, as promised, you guys voted on the Instagram story for which best of category you guys wanted previewed, so here's that. Ready, set, hike! When the days are dreary, never look into your sorrows until you find the sun. Parker Wolf. Tom um, Brady was surrounded by Bill Belichick, arguably the worst coach of all time. <laughs> is air real? Air is real. Are you sure? Yes. Are you sure we're not just breathing nothingness? And the most mediocre. Wait. By the time I turn 80, I will have owned the NBA. Cut it up mm. and replay it in 64 years. 63 I also month. I also will have um, picked a correct March Madness bracket. They all drink beer in Europe. Well, they don't have water over there. Fair no enough. public water. <laughs> right? They don't have water over there? What does that mean? They, isn't it just alcohol? That's it? So, I am fired up, man. Who knew that singing could get you sweaty? <laughs> I'm just saying, bigger, faster, stronger. The next guy they have four is legs. always going to be better. Four legs, better okay. than two legs. <laughs> it's on the blockchain. Do you guys know what blockchain is? No. It's like this thing that's like related to like Bitcoin and stuff. And yeah, just a bunch of digital stuff. That's what no. happened. See, the thing is, about my trades, I just feel like there's some divine thing inside of me called intuition. <laughs> that makes me make these trades. Coach K is going to retire. And you know they pulled a UNC right here. They went with somebody ingrown from their program. Like ingrown, ingrown toenail. toenail. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Ingrown is the worst. <laughs> Ugh. I didn't, I didn't know the word. Someone that's been ingrown. Uh, no, in, inbred? Wait. Inbred <laughs> oh, no, 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 now, no. now they're no. breeding people? In? Stop talking. I, what's the no. word? Brought up in? Yeah, sure. Raised Homegrown? In? Homegrown, there you go. <laughs> Interbred. <laughs> My throat almost that ran out of breath. That was so great. <laughs> Your throat ran out of breath? Essays are long. You didn't take the essay. <laughs> <laughs> That's the whole point. Long Island, why don't you just call yourself Short Peninsula for... All I care, you're getting last in the division. I in my head I thought, JG Graybill. <laughs> and everyone you else didn't say that bus. out loud. <laughs> no, Parker's just sitting there clapping, <laughs> thinking in his head, and people are like, "What is he doing?" <laughs> it's the plumbing company guys. They pay me. They give me money. <laughs> <laughs> and then he gave the ad read, and everybody was like, "Oh, okay." <laughs> JG I get it. Smell bad. Don't not forget me. <laughs> what? <laughs> Lamelo is not. LeBron. An eye for um, an eye makes the whole world see better. You have to look behind the numbers mm. into the statistics with Party Sabetti. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, hey, I haven't crashed. Mm. Only ran into my house once. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wait, no, I was in a physical Defense isn't flashy. No, but it's it hard wins work. games. Defense wins championships. And games. And games. Which lead to championships. Which lead to championships. Yeah. Yeah. Defense. Defense. Or team it. first, the goat or the egg. <laughs> Robert. Robert. Right? Robert. <laughs> Robert. <laughs> Robert. Right? Just, we have a Robert. Just let him go. No, no. There is Robert. Hopefully our voices don't run out of noise. You know, I love pirates. They call me piracy. Parker the pirate. Peace. So that was basically half of one of four to six best of categories. So we have a lot more where that came from. That was just tip of the iceberg. But like I said, Parker and Luke are not here. Special guest today, for some reason wearing sunglasses, kind of conceals his identity, but it's my dad. Um, and basically this, is, this podcast is called All Sports All the Time. And uh, first of all, we do not talk about all the sports. 
because there's there's too many. You can't possibly talk about all the sports. You could. I, there's, that's, I don't think it's possible. We could try. We have tried. We've discussed wife carrying. We've discussed cricket. Mm-hmm. We there's there's some pretty out there sports that we've discussed. So we've we've broadened a little bit. It's also called all sports all the time, and it is definitely not that either. As we constantly get off topic, but we're broadening. We're adding one more sport to the all sports category because. You are the racing expert, basically, compared to the rest of us. I'm going to try. Yeah. I'm going to do my best. Mm -hmm. Compared to everybody else that we know, you would be considered the expert of the group. Anything I can do to help. um, Yeah. Yeah. Parker and Luke really just hung me out to dry. Parker is out west, um, so I, I guess that's a pretty good excuse. Not really. It's, I mean, that, two years of the podcast, I don't know. And Luke's at a baseball tournament, so that one's that one's pretty bad. Also, no bueno. Uh, yeah. No bueno. Much, much worse excuse than being out west for two weeks. But regardless, um, so to broaden our range, basically, uh, we're going to try to, by the end of this, hopefully have turned the audience... Um, and convince them to at least maybe not follow racing, but at least pay attention to it, appreciate it a little bit. So, um, absolutely. Do you want to start with like racing in general? Um, like, racing is probably the oldest sport ever. I'm pretty sure racing is the original sport. Two people well, just running. Sure, so that's you a could good, run the fastest. That's a good point. Yep. Um, to this day, the marathon, which is a foot race, you know, I mean, racing at its cores, like people are just racing anything. Mm-hmm. Um, I saw, a, uh, I think it was like a Netflix special or documentary or whatever. Um, I forget where it was, but they race Netflix. They race water buffaloes oh. through like it seems dangerous through like muddy water. And it's a big deal. It seems terrifying. So it's like whatever you've got, whatever you've what? got, you race it. Right? Yeah. Like if all you've got is your legs, you race them. Uh-huh. If, if all you've got if is all your you've pet got water is, buffalo. If all you've got is a water buffalo, you race it. If you've got a car, you race that. If you've got tractors, you race them. Like uh, tractor race. racing, you're right, Owen. Racing uh-huh. is just inevitable. Mm. That's a quote. Cool, I might title this episode that it's not often I get an episode title right off the bat. I know, Racing is inevitable. I know Parker and Luke would appreciate that as well, since quote. it's there was, since it's a uh, Marvel quote. Well, kind of. <laughs> anyway, not necessarily. We uh, we don't need your Parker and Luke impressions. That's so. Actually, that would be funny. Now that I'm so let me continue it. on that train of thought. That is actually one of the things that I really respect and appreciate about racing is that while different racing venues or um, uh, competitions, different racing competitions, I'm talking about automotive racing, right? So let me, let me bring it down a little bit. I'm not talking about water buffalo racing. I'm talking about automobiles. While it does have a set of rules and each racing style and format has its own specific set of rules, um, it's constantly evolving. It's constantly changing. It's constantly moving and shifting with the technology and the times, and it's constantly pushing itself beyond where it's at. Whereas sports like baseball are dealing with a big crisis where there's this tension between, yeah. well, this is the way it's always been, and people are saying, but why does it have to stay that way? Mm-hmm. You don't really have that in racing. It's oh, Everybody's pushing the envelope. Everybody wants to go faster, be more efficient, you know, whatever competitive edge they can get, they're going to try to get it. Um, now, that has resulted in a lot of cheating over the years, but, I mean, baseball, there's any, cheaters any too. Any sport. Astros. Um, Jeez. <laughs> so. Any sport, there's going to be somebody cheating because they're all right super competitive. Right, exactly. So, But I'm just saying expected. that's one thing that I respect and appreciate about motorsports is that in its relatively short history comparatively Mm -hmm. um it has 
evolved dramatically and continues to change. So it's an ever-changing sport, um, which makes it really interesting to watch and to follow because uh, there's always new tech. There's always somebody comes up with some new little advantage. And then the people who make the rules have to say, well, you know, does this fit within mm -hmm. our rules? I don't know. This is so outside of the box that, and so, yeah, sometimes, what's, sorry. What's an example of something like a, that? A perfect example of that is um, in the racing series known as Formula One, which is uh, an international uh, racing series. In Formula One, um, I want to say this was like in the mid to late 70s, um, a company called Lotus, which is still in business, uh, Lotus was running in Formula One, and their engineers figured out that they could install these droppable side skirts on the car that when dropped, along with the other aero that was happening, aerodynamics happening in and, you know, around and under the car, essentially created a uh, a pocket of vacuum under the body of the car, which suctioned it to the road surface, and it could go around turns 20, 30 miles an hour faster than the other cars mm -hmm. at that time. The, the rule makers couldn't find, they couldn't, no one could find a way to say that they couldn't yeah. do it, so they were allowed to finish that season. They won the championship. They mm -hmm. won so many races that season because they had a they had found a competitive advantage that was within technically within the rules. Yeah. Now, after that season, between that season and the next season, they banned it. Mm -hmm. They said, "No, you can't do that." Well, because everyone saw that that suction effect was so uh, beneficial. They, all they started it. finding ways. Yeah. It's called the Venturi effect. And now racing cars are generating almost a ton of, yeah. of downforce, not just from wings and things on top of the car, but from the underside of the car that's actually sucking the car down to the road instead of just pushing it down. That's a great example. Thank you. <laughs> And so it's, but, it's those okay. technological advances. Mm -hmm. It's a sport that is always yeah. pushing the limits, always pushing the boundaries forward, forward, more, more, more. Um, I mean, to the point where racing drivers have died testing the limits, pushing the limits of what was known to be possible. Mm -hmm. um, it's and it's just what they, turn, it's but. just what they do. I, well, and that's the other thing that, that I respect about it is it's not a safe sport. I mean, I know you guys just did a, uh, you know, thing about which sports are, yeah. are the most dangerous or whatever. Least dangerous. Least dangerous. Swimming is the safest sport. Golf is also very safe, except sure. for when you get hit in the eye with a golf ball. Sure. Motorsports has become more mm -hmm. safe, honestly, in my lifetime. It was yeah. in, the, in the 80s, in the 1980s, uh, a racing series called World Rally Championship was in basically an arms race of uh, power and torque, speed, all those things. And all the manufacturers were making their cars faster and faster and faster to the point where uh, it was becoming really, really unsafe um, because the safety standards mm -hmm. were not keeping up with the speed, the speed of innovation Mm -hmm. Yeah, the speed of innovation of speed. Um, that would be another good okay. title for the episode. The speed Sp of innovation of speed. No. A little confusing. And so it took years and a lot of work from the driver's union okay. to get the rule book to enforce yeah. stricter state safety standards to protect the drivers. And... Some people actually pushed back against that and said, well, that's what drivers are signing up for. It's dangerous. It's a dangerous sport. You, you put your life on the line every time you get into that, that vehicle, that car. Mm -hmm. Well, tell that to an NBA player. Then, tell that yeah. to a baseball player. <laughs> you sign up to play this sport, you literally take your life into your own hands every time you step out on the field. 
or the court. They would. No, they are you going to get as let many? That fly. Are you going to let? Are as many people going to sign up for it? No, it's yeah. going to really trim down the yeah. the numbers, right? So, yeah. So it's a it's a fascinating genre of sports to follow. Mm-hmm. Um, there's so many different series, uh, different types of racing. There's open wheel racing, which is Formula One, uh, IndyCar. Um, there's a few others within that. Um, and then there's closed wheel, which we all have heard of NASCAR. Um, there's again, a whole bunch of different series. There's supercar, Mm -hmm. uh, which is like really popular in Australia. Um, V8 supercars, really fun to watch. Um, yeah. And there's dirt track. So there's, um, well, it's a mixture of dirt and tarmac. Um, so there's World Rally Championship that I just mentioned. They race on dirt and on roads. And now there's a new variant. Um, so World Rally Championship is just new variant That's timed. Yeah, it's well just phrased. timed. Oh, sorry, too soon. Well phrased. Variant. Nice. Okay, nice. <laughs> World Rally Championship is a timed event. So you're racing against the clock. You're not at, only um, one driver is supposed to be on course like time at one trials, time. Basically. Yes, it's a time trial event okay. over the course of you know so many stages. Um, so they've developed this new series called um, Rally Cross, World Rally Cross, which uh, is on a closed course. You do five laps And there are up to as many as five or six cars on track at the same time. So if you've ever watched the Winter Olympics Mm -hmm. and watched uh, Snowboard Cross, where they they go down like a course all at the same time and Mm -hmm. people are like, you know, elbowing for for position. jostling, Jostling for position, thank you. Think about doing that in cars. Really fast cars. Yeah. All wheel drive, super fast cars. They're sliding around, bumping into each other, getting into all kinds of mischief in five laps. So uh-huh. it's really fast. Way better than NASCAR with their 150 laps. Yeah, it's really fast. Laps. It's really competitive. Uh-huh. You've got to place within the top three to move on to the next heat, and there's a scoring process that happens. Um, it's, it's a lot of fun to watch. Yeah. So anyway, that's just another thing I appreciate about motorsports in general. There's so many different types of motorsports. I'm only hitting on just a few. Yeah. Um, Going back to the innovation, do you think yeah. that uh, that type of like culture of innovation is so successful, specifically in motorsports, because it's like they're the machines are more important. The, the machine is more important than the driver, right? Like, it's better to... You need a good driver, obviously, but, like, the main focus is creating a better car. Do you think that that's why they're able to innovate more than the regular sports? Because the other sports, it's, like, it's the... just It's just the people. Like, you can't really innovate a basketball player to, like, increase their talents at the same rate that you could with mm-hmm. the technology of a car. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, so you actually said a few different things there, um, but yes, I think that does factor in, um, you know, they're not limited to, um, they're not limited to the driver's physical capabilities, Mm -hmm. right? So... You know, the the driver can make the car go as fast as the car can go. So that does make innovation more doable, right? But going back to something that you said towards the beginning of that question was, um, is the car more important than the driver? No. Um, the you can you can have the fastest car, or the 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 best overall car on track. But if you don't have the best driver, you're probably not going to win that race. Conversely, you can have the best driver on track who's not in the best car and is probably not going to win that race. Um, 
So it really is this fascinating combination. Combination, I was going to say conjunction of man and machine or person and machine, sorry. We're not not sexist on uh, this program. Person program. person and machine yeah. mm -hmm. um, working in unison. They yeah. both have to be and is it I'm this is going to go to another I don't, did I answer the first question? Uh, pretty why, much. Yeah. Why innovation? I, is it? Yeah. Is it because of? You the, touched on it. Yeah. Um, so uh, yes, I think it does have to do a lot with the fact that we're talking about mm -hmm. technology. I mean, if you've watched Robot Wars at all, I have not. No, where people this has been going on where for they a long time. Robots? Where they they have you know at first it was like remote control robots, but now they're autonomous robots. Like the technology mm -hmm. just keeps you yeah. know, improving. Um, okay. Anyway, so yes, it does. Um, but the driver is very important. Um, so, right, and that's another thing that I love is the, um, it's not mechanical, even though so much of it is mechanics. Um, there's also, uh, you know, for the drivers, they have to believe that they can, that they can win. But they also have to, restrain their aggression and not do anything stupid mm -hmm. to either take themselves out of the race or, you know, try to go too fast, make a mistake, lose places, things like that. There's this tension. It's, you know, yeah, I just, I think it's, mm -hmm. even though there's so much technology involved, it's also a very human sport and a very human dynamic to that. Yeah. So specifically with F1, does Lewis Hamilton have the best car? Overall, I think, yes, he does. Um, not just the best car, but the best team around the car. Um, if you've never watched Formula One or paid any attention to Formula One, okay. um, for each car that goes out on track, <laughs> there's an enormous number of people who are making that happen. Um, you know, all the way from uh, the people. Here's an interesting fact about Formula One: is that as to to be um, to be counted as a manufacturer to to compete in the manufacturer championship, um, which is points based, uh, you have to fabricate, custom fabricate uh, a certain percentage or more of the parts that are on your car or on that car. So it's not just like, you know, go to the car shop and buy mm -hmm. yourself a Formula One car and go racing. Like, you actually have to make those parts. So there's, um, you know, people that, there's engineers that are uh, creating new parts and uh, fabricators that are fabricating those parts. And then there are, you know, uh, mechanics who are putting those pieces together to create something and then they're testing that okay what happened you know they're going back to the engineers we need this we need that mm -hmm. um and it all has to work together uh i forget what the question was <laughs> uh it was just does lewis hamilton have the oh yes best car so you said yes so yes he does, he does but i think I'm, what i'm team. saying is that is because of the yeah. team that's around him mm -hmm. so um What's a good what's a good sports analogy outside of racing to someone who's considered to be one of the best in their sport, but put them in an environment where they don't have the best around them, and Tom Brady, they're not as successful. But that's my case that I make. But didn't all the time with Tom Brady. But didn't Tom Brady just go to Tampa Bay and win the Super Bowl? Mm -hmm. So I don't understand how that's same their roster was ridiculous everybody's uh, right so i'm saying this is what i say to parker parker's like he went to tampa bay I'm like okay tampa bay is historically bad but i'm not gonna get into a tangent don't worry tampa bay's roster this no, they, year they played really well was loaded they played really well i mean especially their defense their right? roster is so good they had a top five defense before brady got there you could easily argue that their defense won them that game and then oh the super bowl specifically yes, yes. Yeah, their defense was top five before so, Brady got there, and then he got there, and they added a bunch of weapons on offense, and it was just... So I'm saying, yeah. 
like super team. If we're if we're relating it to football, what is the worst team mm. in football? Right now, probably the Houston Texans. So take Tom Brady, plug him into the Texans. They probably go like six and eleven. Not great. There's, right? There's I mean maybe he eighteen or seventeen games now instead of sixteen. Maybe he helps a little bit. Yeah. Maybe not. This is also a discussion Parker and I had. He thinks Tom Brady would like win the Super Bowl with the Texans, which is insane. Okay. But anyway. Yeah. He wouldn't Tom Brady wouldn't do as well if he were on like the Texans or the sure. Jets or something. Now here's an interesting fact. Fun fact. Back when Lewis Hamilton has been with Mercedes for uh, a long time. I don't know how many years. When he moved from his previous team to Mercedes, Mercedes was not doing well in Formula One at all. They were pretty much a wreck. But they, but but Lewis was doing really well, and they were able to lure him onto their team, and they started a, a rebuilding process. Mm-hmm. Um, they invested huge amounts of money, huge <laughs> huge amounts of manpower. Uh, people power uh, to get that team up to the caliber that um, could support Lewis at the level that he was able to compete at. So again, mm-hmm. it's did Lewis Hamilton make Mercedes great? Yeah. Not by himself, right? But it doesn't hurt. You still want to have the best yeah. drivers out there. So Makes right sense. now, there's this great um, there's this great rivalry between Mercedes and Lewis Hamilton, Mercedes and Belletary Botas, uh, who's his teammate, Max Verstappen, who's driving for Red Bull and has been for a few years. I don't know that Red Bull's really ever going to let him go unless he wants to go somewhere else, but... Um, Particularly those three on any given race day are going to give each other a fight. Um, Red Bull has done a great job um, bringing their cars up to almost on par with Mercedes, if not on par. Um, Mercedes has come up with a couple technical advantages. Um, Red Bull might have actually the faster car, but, um, yeah, it's just, says Lewis Hamilton. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, I mean, Max is a a young driver. Um, he's, but he's got a lot of experience. He's got almost too much confidence. Um, and he is not afraid to be very aggressive. That's gotten him into a lot of trouble over the years. But it can pay off, you know. Big risk, big reward. Yeah. For those of you who don't know, Lewis Hamilton is dominant in F1. He wins almost every year. Correct. He has won the Drivers' Championship, man, a bunch of times in a row. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and let me look at it. It's gotta. It's gotta be at least like. I want to say six. I was gonna say six. Yeah. I think he's won six years. That's um, something crazy. Maybe even consecutive. So ask me another question while you look that up. <laughs> Lewis Hamilton and his yeah. dominance. Um, if you had to predict, because Lewis Hamilton's been around a while. Like you said, Max Verstappen's younger. He's probably going to be around long. Actually, two questions. One, like, how long is the lifespan, career lifespan of an F1 driver? Like, mm. how long can Lewis Hamilton go? And then who would be your guess for who will eventually overtake him Yeah, that's a good when he reaches that point? I know you love your predictions. Um, yeah. How long is the lifespan of a Formula One driver? Because, um, like, it's got to be yeah, longer than, like, an I'm, NBA player or an NFL yeah, player. Yeah, so it's, Kimi, Raikkonen, Kimi Raikkonen is currently driving for um, Alpha. I think he's driving for Alpha Romeo. Um he is currently, if I'm not mistaken, the oldest F1 driver, and he might be in his mid 30s. Okay. Now, I don't know how old he was when he got into the sport, but 
I would say that mid to upper 30s is about where people start to tap out. Okay. What you so don't, it's not that different from other athletes. Yeah. I mean, what you don't realize is the amount of abuse the driver's body is taking inside that F1 car. Um, when they're cornering at full speed, um, when they're accelerating at max uh, speed, their bodies are dealing with um, the same type of G-forces as like fighter pilots. Um, so they're really getting, you know, moved around. It takes a lot of muscle control to like, mm -hmm. you know, hold yourself in that position, um, your internal organs are getting all jostled around. Um, so it's, it's a workout, um, for, you know, for formula one and other racing mm -hmm. drivers as well. Uh, you know, then you get into, uh, endurance racing, which is hours and hours and hours, you know, and some, a lot of times drivers will switch out. There's, you know, two drivers or, um, more depending on the length, but, um, you know, a lot of them are set up with a system inside their, uh, fire resistant suit that allows them to go to the bathroom mm -hmm. while they continue to drive. I think NASCAR has that too. I mean, yeah, right. But that, I yeah. mean, they're just, that's just one driver around and around and around and around. Yeah. So like, what are they going to do? But, uh. You know, I mean, talk about dedication, mm -hmm. right? To to pee in your own uniform. <laughs> yeah. Like, uh, what's his name? Lamar Jackson had to go running off the field, you know? We if don't was, know if that was a good if he was a, If he was a racing driver, yeah. it would be like, just go, man, mm -hmm. and deal with it. Yeah. Like, I have a lot of respect for racing drivers. Yeah, I never considered... Just, you're just sitting there. Yeah. In your, well, you're not just sitting there. No, you're, you're working. You have you're to. working really hard. Yeah. It's like a really intense workout. Yeah. And if you have to go to the bathroom, you just have you to just, go to the bathroom. Yeah. And then you're just sitting in it. And everybody just expects you to. Yeah. It's not like a conversation. You're not having a conversation about it. It's just everybody knows that that's what you're going to do. No. <laughs> they, they have. You don't have to get they too have, deep into the details of that. They but. have high risk of injury or death. Mm -hmm. They can be burned alive inside their car. Um, I mean, it's happened before, unfortunately. Um, yeah. You know, and they strap themselves in there and, and go do it week after week. I looked it up. Lewis Hamilton has won seven world championships. Seven. I think that ties. There's an article that says eight would be the record. Yep. He's also finished first in 98 races. So Max Verstappen is actually currently in the points lead in the Formula One series. Uh, I don't think they're quite halfway through the season yet. Um, so if you haven't yet, definitely check out Formula One. What's their season length, time? I, I don't know. I know, um, I, well, I don't know. I saw a headline that... Um, one of the circuits, I forget which one, um, pulled out. So the venue itself said, hey, we're not able to host this year. Okay. So I don't know if they're going to be able to find a replacement for that spot in the schedule or if they're just going to do one less event. Okay. Um, but, but they're, yeah, about, they're usually, about halfway through right now. Uh, I, don't, Roughly. I don't think so. It, probably a little less than half. Okay. Let's, let's say that. Um, and they're still, you know, like everyone else, they're still coming back from COVID protocols and mm -hmm. trying to, you know, do the best they can. But I don't, I don't know that they're running a full, full schedule. Okay. Yep. Uh, so race, races are on Sunday. So here's another fun go. thing about Formula One specifically is, uh, and, and motorsports in general, is qualifying. So you don't just show up and run the race. Mm -hmm. Your starting order is determined by your qualifying times. Um, so teams and drivers play all kinds of 
little games to try to get that like fastest yeah. overall lap time. But um, if you don't in qualifying, so you have a uh, what's called free practice. So that's just um, like a shakedown to see how things are going and if anything needs to be adjusted or changed because there's a million adjustments you can make on those cars. Um, so free practice one, free practice two, I think there's a free practice three. Then they go into qualifying. There's qualifying one, qualifying two, qualifying three. The bottom so many times in qualifying one don't get to do qualifier two, qualifying two. Mm-hmm. Likewise, the bottom so many qualifying two don't even get to participate in qualifying three. So what that does is rewards the fastest and most consistent mm-hmm. drivers and cars by giving them more practice than everyone else. So, and then it puts the faster cars up front mm-hmm. so they have a chance to get away um, and be competitive with each other while the slower cars and drivers are at the back. Now, eventually, they're going to catch them and start to pass mm-hmm. the slower cars. Lap them. Lap them, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, anyway, uh, again, once again, I forgot what I was talking about. Uh, you, you said races are on Sundays. Oh, and yes. And then you said right. another... So... You pivoted very right, quickly. Right, right, right. So... If you want to check out Formula One, the easiest way to do it is to subscribe to their YouTube channel. Okay. Um, and then they put out uh, highlights. free practice highlights, videos, qualifying highlights, videos. Okay. So it's kind of fun. Like, you know, the week leading up to the race on Sunday, you have, you know, like Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday videos to watch. You're kind of already getting an idea of who's fast, who's not. Mm-hmm. Um you know, some of the dynamics that are happening. You get to see the, the track, the course that they're going to be racing on Sunday. Um, and then Sunday afternoon, they'll put out a race highlight video because um, I, I don't usually watch the races on Sunday. I watch the race highlight video after, um, after which is great because then if there's 10 boring laps, you don't have to watch those. Yeah. You just skip through that. Skip to the good parts. Can, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So there. What was I gonna? Oh, I would. I would recommend the YouTube channel just because the announcer is amazing. Mm, Yes. Whoever F1's announcer guy is, I hear when he plays the videos out loud when he's watching them. I don't know who the announcer is for F1, but he is fantastic. Um, Mm -hmm. very good at. He's he's excited. The entire time, but it's not like annoyingly exciting. Mm. He's just enthusiastic enough without going over the top. He has a great accent, and he's like very yeah. He just does a very good job commentating. You ready? I can always tell when you're watching an F1 video because I hear the announcer guy. You ready for this? You got you to turn it up so that we can make sure they can hear it. Five lights on ahead of the drivers. It's lights out and away we go. Let's yeah, make this guy. Well. He's so good. It's, this is the race just started. This is this is his this is his energy level the whole time. It's yeah. It's just he goes zero to a hundred and then just stays at a hundred. Yeah, and it's the whole time, and it's fantastic because then <laughs> you're amazing. then I'm also at a hundred the whole time. Like oh ah oh, ah. Oh. Do you know who that guy is? I don't remember his name. Um, I'm sorry. Whoever he is, sorry, whoever you are. We'll find it out. But British, he's amazing. British guy, announcer guy. Sorry. Um, but uh, that was one of the things that I wanted to say. You didn't ask me about this. But, like, the, the tension level, the excitement level, is partially because everything that's happening in motorsport is um, so precise. It has to be so precise and accurate. Mm-hmm. Like, if... If one of these drivers makes a mistake, they're off the track. They're maybe out of the race. They're, uh, you know, breaking something on their car. Um, they're letting their whole entire team down if, if they make a mistake, you know, if it's a driver error. A tiny mistake. Um, in the same way, if, you know, something wasn't right on the car, 
uh, or they come in for a pit stop and they can't get a wheel changed fast enough or something, you know, uh, that's like the team letting the driver down uh, because now they lost time and they might have lost positions and things. Like there's always, they're always operating on a razor edge. Um, and that's for me, one of the things that makes motorsport so fun to watch um, and, and be engaged in is there is no margin for error, almost no margin yeah. for error. Um, and so that, that chasing, chasing perfection, um, you know, and winning obviously, because you know, that's the, that's the concept, right? Like if we all do our jobs yeah. perfectly and everything performs perfectly the way it's supposed to, we should win. Yeah. Um, and if anybody else makes a mistake around us, that's just gives us a better chance to win. Um, yeah. Yeah. And so there's, there's so much, there's so much excitement from, from the drop of the lights to the end of the race. It's like, what's going to happen? You know? So anyway. Yeah. So formula one is 52 laps, 52 laps. But to put that into perspective, yeah. To put that into perspective, most of the circuits they're going around are anywhere from just over a minute per lap mm-hmm. to like maybe a minute 50, like just under two minutes a lap. Um, so, you know, it's an hour ish. Now, yeah. that doesn't include. Which isn't that bad. Yeah. That does not for include. A event. That does not include um, yellow flags, which mm-hmm. are just cautions, red flags, which means. Everybody has to stop, and they restart the race. Um, you know, that's kind of like stoppage time in soccer. Like, mm-hmm. so it's about an hour if everything goes clean, but it never does. <laughs> Which is one of the things that yeah. I love about motorsports. It's not that I want to see people wreck, mm-hmm. but for instance, uh, in the last Formula One race, Max Verstappen running a great race. His team was nail in the pit stops and and he was doing everything right he's in the lead he's got actually a comfortable lead and uh i think it was his right rear tire exploded Mm. and he went boom into the wall and he was out race over like what are you supposed to do you know what i mean that could it's really frustrating Mm mm-hmm Right? Yeah. But that, as a spectator, at the end. as a spectator, it's like, uh-huh. there's, there's always excitement. Like, you didn't, you wouldn't want to turn that off mm-hmm. and be like, ah, he's going to win. Right? Because you don't yeah. know. You don't know what's going to happen all the way to the finish line. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Thank you for filling in. Um, Absolutely. For Parker and Luke. We expanded our range. So now hopefully you guys know more about another sport. Um, or seasons going on genre of sport right? yeah because motorsports it's fair it's not like f1 like, is a like sport. football tried then, to do like arena football yeah. and like different kinds of football and they all just kind of bleh, like yeah. fizzled out right there's just football american football xfl xfl <laughs> is that even a thing for real yeah the xfl is a thing <laughs> barely but it is a exactly thing. <laughs> barely but in motorsports, there's yeah. so many different uh-huh. variations of it. Yeah. Anyway. Because you so, can race anything. Yeah, correct. Correct. That's why. So what you guys need to do oh, whoa. All is right. like this video, okay. comment in to let Owen, Parker, and Luke know that you want to hear more reporting about motorsports. <laughs> I feel like you're going to be somebody doing that. Yeah, it's probably just going to be me. No, I need your help. I need your help. I like motorsports. You're going to like motorsports if you check it out. Just check it out and then let these guys know about it so they can give you more of what you want, which is motorsports. Got a little aggressive here at the end, but... Just a helpful tip. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Despite pointing at the camera and saying, you need to do this, but... Well, I want to make sure they know I'm talking to them, not you. Oh, okay, okay. I don't need you to comment on your own channel. No, I won't comment. I need the people to comment on your channel. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, you guys know what I'm talking about. He's confused, but you know. Do that? No, no, no. I wasn't confused. I was just you were a little pushy there, but you know, it's fine. Speaking of things you need to do, if you have any plumbing issues, 
you need to contact JG Graybill Plumbing. Do you want to? Ha do you have anything to say about JG Graybill? You've never done a, an ad read with us, but it's not just if you have plumbing issues, because here's the thing: plumbing is kind of like one of those things where you don't really want to wait to to think about it until you have an issue. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You want to make sure... I prefer not to think about plumbing at all. That your stuff is high quality, good to go, that it is not going to give you any problems. That's why you want to call mm. JG Grable. That's why you want them coming out to your house, to your business, to your property, to take care of things. Because they're going to... Exactly. Now, obviously, yeah. if you need something fixed, they're going to fix it right. Mm -hmm. They're going to stand behind it. They're going to be good to work with while they're there on the site, but also if you need something installed, whatever, you want to upgrade your system, they're going to make sure that they get you the best quality materials for a fair price. They're going to treat you right and stand behind their work with their uh, workmanship guarantee. And yeah, so call them at 717-786-3276. What was that? 717-786-3276, I think, is the phone number. You just said it kind of quietly. I wasn't I sure did. if people could hear I you. I think that's the right phone number. I don't have it pulled up this oh, week. Oh, man. Even though we've been saying it for like a year. You should know it by heart, for real. Website, www.jgrable.com. That one's easy. 717-786-3276. Boom. There. I said it more confidently that time, and I just felt more confident yeah, about you it. you got to say it with confidence. But... Yeah, and if you mention all sports all the time, when you obviously contact them, because you need to do that, uh, mention all sports all the time, and you will get $25 off of your purchase, however much you spend, $25 off. In Parker your pocket. And, Parker and Luke aren't here, so I don't know, spend it however you want, I don't really care, it's not really my business. 717-768-3276. I think that was what I said. I wasn't listening. Or I say seven eight six. I either said seven eight six or seven six eight. <sighs> seven six eight three two seven six. That episode Scro one hundred and four. Scroll it on a banner on the or a mm. thing on the bottom. There you go. Or link in the description. Link in bio. Well, but on YouTube it'd be in the description. Good point. A couple of quick headlines to wrap up this episode. Julio Jones went to the Titans for a second round pick was very very cheap shocking that the titans got him for that little um good for the titans they were they were they've been good the last few years they've been able to quite get over the hump and it looked like their team had gotten worse this year but now the addition of julio they might have actually improved after not having the best offseason ever um and so the titans one of the top teams in the AFC now because they have A.J. Brown and Julio Jones and Derrick Henry. That's what I was going to say. With Ryan Tannehill. It's, Ryan Tannehill has been very good. Are uh, they going to start throwing the ball to Henry? I mean, I don't think they need to throw it to Henry. But what if they did? If What if you fake the handoff and dump it to him? Uh-huh. But why throw it to Derrick Henry when you can throw it to A.J. Brown or Julio Jones? Because they're drawing the defense down the field. Well, then you just hand it off to Derrick Henry. I don't know. I mean, I don't know how good Derrick Henry is at catching. Uh, he's not like Christian McCaffrey, Alvin Kamara type receiver. Mm. But I anyway, think, I think Julio, he's, he's crossed the ball before. What? Tennessee. Tennessee. Julio went to Houston. I don't know why anyone would ever want to go to Houston, but you know. Okay. Next um, headline. <laughs> the next headline is that the Sixers, as of this recording, are up two games to one on the Atlanta Hawks. Uh, game three was the most recent game that happened. Joel Embiid had another great game, um, and the Hawks fans were not very nice to Embiid. He, there were two points oh. in the game in which he got Poor hurt, guy. and the Hawks fans were cheering that he appeared to be injured. What do you think Philly fans would have and done? I, well, no, this is my thing, though. If, it was, if the, if the oh, roles yeah, yeah, were yeah. reversed, what, if Philly fans would have been yes. like throwing beers at him and stuff <laughs> while he's laying on the ground hurt. No, they wouldn't. No. Yes, they, they would. would. They Philly would. fans, come on. Philly Comment fans. Comment in. What's what? the worst Philly fans thing you've ever okay. seen or heard? Philly fans aren't great. Philly fans are pretty bad. But the thing is, we over-inflate 
the Philly fans' narrative. If Philadelphia fans had done that, like if Trey Young twists his ankle and Philadelphia fans were like, yeah, everybody would be jumping all over them. Like, look how terrible Philadelphia fans are. But nobody says anything about hmm. the Hawks cheering when Embiid gets hurt. It's just, it's not... Interesting. A little, bit, not, of, little, little bit of discrimination, maybe. Yeah, it's not very impartial coverage of fan bases. Hmm. Um, Fair enough. But the Sixers looked dominant in uh, Game 3, looking to... Hopefully win game four. We don't really want this series to be tied 2-2. We're trying to get past the Hawks as quickly as possible because Danny Green is hurt now, so we want to get him time to rest. That would be very helpful because the Nets are destroying the Bucks. It looks like that series is going to be over pretty quickly. Uh, the Bucks managed to win game three, but barely in a very ugly game. The Nets are going to make pretty quick work of them. So Next deadline. Yeah. Um... The Phillies had back-to-back... This is the last headline. The Phillies oh. had back-to-back walk-offs. It was crazy. They had... That w- drop? What? That, that toss? What's what's better? That flip? I prefer a... It depends, but sometimes a bat drop can be better than a bat flip. Like when a guy just stands there and then just drops just, the bat. Just, like a mic drop. Like this. Home run. You watch it, right? And you just... Watch it for dramatic effect, yeah. and then you just go. The simple drop. And walk, walk down the can, first baseline. Yeah, it can be better than a flip. Jog, jog. You want to jog down the first baseline so you don't look uh, guys too walk, cocky. Guys can walk sometimes. Um, but yeah, they walked it off twice. They had Luke Williams, the rookie, his first ever home run it was a walk off home run to win the game against the Braves, and then Gene Segura uh, capped off a three run bottom of the tenth inning, also against the Braves. He capped um, it off by in, popping in a cap. Epic comeback. What does With popping a homer. cap mean? It's I've never heard that phrase before. Popping a cap. Technically, it's discharging a firearm. So oh. maybe not. A he great did. Game. He launched it. So, he, there you go. That's what I'm saying. He hit the ball very he hard. Popped the cap. Yeah. To cap uh-huh. off is a hard line drive. Yeah. I I'd never heard that phrase before, but it yeah that worked. Um, it's so, from the '90s. Sorry. I wasn't alive in the 90s, so... Yeah, but you gotta know your references. Know. Pop culture references. Do I? You should. Alright, if you guys know what that is, I guess let me know. I doubt anyone our age knows that. We're definitely not targeting the younger audience with that one. Um, but... <laughs> Sorry. The, <laughs> those were the, uh, the very Philly-focused headlines this Philly. week. Because, yeah, Philadelphia sports... Doing pretty well. Obviously, the Sixers have been the centerpiece of Philadelphia sports this year, what with the Eagles being pretty bad. What and the team? Phillies maybe starting to build some momentum, hopefully. Um, so, yeah, hopefully next week. Uh, I don't think Parker will be back next week, but it should be me and Luke next week. Hopefully by then the Phillies will be back over 500. So we'll be able to talk about, hopefully, some good Phillies stuff. Hopefully that momentum carries throughout the week. And we will also update you guys on the Atlantic motorsports. League. Oh, well, sorry. I mean, may, if if enough people comment, maybe we could do motorsports. We'll see. But do that. Um, but yeah, we'll also update you on the Atlantic League. We skipped that this week because we had a lot of stuff. Um, but the Atlantic League updates will continue next week. Two years, two years of podcasting. Parker and I were freshmen when we started and now we're about to be seniors which is weird uh luke was literally in middle school luke was like a baby and it yeah he came on uh episode seven we had him on to discuss his uh his head injury where he was hit with a bat and knocked out but did not get a concussion um and then it just it went from there so choked up Oh, a little so emotional. It's like, oh, oh no, no, I don't want that. Oh. Wow. That's Episode 104. Thank you, guys. See you later. I like Yeah.